Hey guys, this is Peter, and today I'm taking a second look at the Ecom 5G Home Internet Gateway. That's actually what it is. It's a gateway. It actually receives 5G signal and converts it into Wi-Fi and Ethernet for, well, dispersing around your home. Now, this one, a lot of people said, hey, that's a lot of money. Well, I'm going to take the skin off of this and show you all the different antennas that are inside this thing. As you'll see, this is way bigger than a 4G solution. 5G is a whole different beast. There's a whole spectrum of frequencies out there to receive and it can't be solved with a single pair of antennas as you're about to see and what i wanted to do is see if i couldn't improve upon the signal and also i wanted to show you where all the different antennas are so uh, i do have a coupon code to make that even cheaper take a look down below but and take a look at my other review on this where we cover a little bit more we talk about who it'll work with all the different companies uh, that it will support but this is why i wanted to take another look at it because i was getting a 5g signal but it was well I'm going to speed market against uh, before I, I go and do anything else. But uh, I did want to show you, I've taken the thing apart now. I want to get a better signal and see if I can't even do better. So the engineer showed me how to take this thing apart. The top comes off. Uh, the bottom indeed comes off. And uh, that was a little bit tricky to figure out how to take the screws out of the top to enable this to happen. And once I was enabled that to happen, you could see all the different pairs of antennas. So my question for the engineers are, which ones are which? Well, they provided me with this. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna just jump to the chase and show you there are six different antenna pairs in here just for cellular. And then there's more for Wi-Fi. But we're concerned with the cellular ones. And you may wanna say, hey, some of those look like they're paired. Like zero and three look like they're paired. One and two look like they're paired. They're going after the same frequencies. So black and gray and red and white and black and blue. Well, obviously you'd think we want to go for the fastest. So let's get the black and blue one. Well, not necessarily. You always want to know what you're going after. So uh, in the T-Mobile world, these are the different frequencies that they have. And I'm actually going after N41, which is, I'm going to put those scores back up there again so you could see them. I'm going after 2,500 megahertz. Band 41 is 2,500 megahertz. I already get band 41. I want to get it even better. So uh, I think what I would be doing, er, I like these two. They're solidly, I'm going to go with antennas one and two. However, if you're out in the boondocks, and a lot of you are, and uh, I don't know if boondocks is a negative connotation, not meant to be. If you're a signal challenged, you may be going after uh, N71. That's it. You live in a beautiful rural area. There you go. If you live in a beautiful rural area, you may want to go for band 71 because that has so much more coverage. Uh, as you saw with mine before, I get really good scores for N71. It's just that this is the bandwidth. So this is the frequency. And when we look at this frequency, all right, the best antennas to pick that one up are going to be antenna sets 0 and 3. So zero and three is what you'd want to go if you're going after that extended range XR band. Uh, but I'm going to be going after a different band. So many cool antennas in this. These two, these ones are cool. There's kind of a little two circuit boards that they cross hatch together. Those are actually Wi-Fi antennas. But uh, here's your blue and your black, your high frequency ones that are actually for really high frequencies. What is that? That's five gigahertz. That is really up high there. Wow. Okay, so that actually isn't for this T-Mobile solution, really. The best ones for us, hmm. Yeah, look, we're missing it. 2,500, we do not want bands uh, or antennas four and five. We want to leave the blue and the black alone. We're going to go ahead and touch with the, let's see. I think we're going to get antennas one and two, which is the white and the red. There, we got a red one right here and a white one over here. Two different sides. This is so well designed. I love this little enclosure. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some antenna leads on them. I've ordered them. All we got to do is simply remove the antenna clips from up here on the board and snap these on. Wire them creatively through the outside so it still looks good. Put it back together and test it out. That's what we're going to be doing today. So let's take a look. Well, one thing I want to do before I take anything apart, so well, I guess any further apart, 
I have not touched the antennas yet. I'm leaving the existing antennas the way that they are. I did want to get a baseline test so we can see what this looks like. Now, whenever you plug in something like this and you don't know what the gateway is because it slightly left my mind here for a second, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go here down to command prompt. You can just type in command and command prompt comes up. You don't need administrative rights or anything like that. Just, just like this is fine. IP config. There we go. The bottom one tells you what your gateway is. 192.168.1.1. I probably could have guessed that. But let's go ahead and type that in. 192.168.1.1. Guess what? That's going to bring me to the firmware for this device. And I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. All right, and it gets me to here. So I can see that, yes, it indeed, I'm getting a 5G signal. That is great. Uh, I'm getting three bars. So what does that mean? Well, let's do a quick test and see what we get. Let's see. So in my garage with the antennas, I'll hold it up a little bit. Just give it its best shot possible. But this is what we get in the garage. Let's give it a go. 35 ping. Come on. There we go. Now we're into the range of 5G at least. There we, this is a 5G score. It would have stopped in the 70s or 80s if it was 4G. So 155, it's, well, 160. 160 is not bad. 160 and up we're getting, it should pick up a little bit. I'm going to call that five and a half, six. Stop going down. <laughs> And five. All right, now my garage is kind of a Faraday cage, but that's why I do external antennas. So now we have a baseline, and guess what? Now I'm gonna show you how you can just tap in right here. Guess what, the red, uh, we're looking for the red and the white. They're not that far from each other, and you don't have to take anything further apart in order to get those. So I'm gonna go after them right now. Well, let's take a look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out a little plastic tool and go underneath there's little clips i'm going to put show a picture here because it's really hard to see and i'm going to carefully pry from two different spots and try to lift the thing straight up without causing any torque or anything weird because <laughs> then i'm going to take these little things out of the bag and these little clips have the exact same connector on them yeah i'm going to grab one the exact same little connector on them it's going to fit on the PCB right over the little stud and make a perfect connection. And then it has the same ones that fit my antennas, my professional antenna that is from uh, Proxycast. I'm going to hook up this thing to a really nice outdoor $99 antenna and see if I don't get better scores. Let's take a look. All right. So we're about to see this together. I am got back on. I'm connected with five. To oh, look at those bars. I got all the bars now. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, don't know what I'm going to get as far as a score yet, but, uh, well, that's what we're here for. Wow. I wish I was some way I could look into the signal better. I'm going to look into that and see if there isn't. Um, but let's go ahead and do a speed test. Speed test is already open. It's going to remind us of what we got. We last got a 35, a ping, 160, and let's call that 5, because we're going to beat that by a lot, I hope. We got great signal now. We pulled another two bars and everything's glowing blue. So uh, I'm quite fingers crossed. Let's see, again, it's only gonna pull a single 5G signal so much like my phone. It's gonna get a single 5G signal even though it's a really good signal. Let's see what we got. 74 ping is a bit higher than I was hoping. Oh my goodness, look at these scores. We'll have to run the, oh my God. That it wow, that is wow, that is indeed some amazing wow. I was not, as you can tell, I wasn't really expecting. <gasps> oh my goodness, even the up is a cranking on this. All right, I'm gonna try and get that ping a little lower, but oh my goodness, these are really, really good scores out of that little tiny modem with an inexpensive card plugged into it. Um. Wow, so if you have a T-Mobile uh, connection, or if you have any 4G connection and you're living out in the sticks, this is a viable solution. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna show you how, I'll put all the pictures and tell you how I did this. Wow. 
75 ping. The ping's still high, but what a great score that is. So yeah, you wouldn't be gaming on this, but everything else, absolutely. Wow, am I going to get 500? Solid 460. And of course, it's going to be time of day independent. That up is absolutely amazing. All right, let's see what kind of other things I can figure out with this. Um, maybe system, system information. I'm getting some great scores. So reference signal receive power is less than, uh, it's better than 80. So look at that, it's 76. Reference signal received quality is way better than 10. Signal to noise is almost 30, it's way above 20. Wow, that is indeed a fine score. And uh, if you live out in the sticks and you want to be able to get 5G, this is not a bad solution at all. All right, well, if you're crazy enough like I am to actually want to take this thing apart and potentially ruin your warranty, but whatever, uh, I just wanted to show you how I did it because you start with the bottom and I removed the four, well, I moved the feet and stuck them to the side because they were all in the, all four corners. And then there's a little lock. A li I don't know if you can see that. Little tiny locks right there in the plastic on all four sides right in the center. And you need a plastic tool. A lot of times they give you these with, uh, well, when you take apart phones or something like that, you can pop these out and take that off. But then you're looking at this and it still doesn't want to come apart. Now, yeah, there's a few more screws to take out, but this is what you need to do. You go after the top. The top, you can use that same tool and pry it out. There's actually four different locks that you're trying to pick and you don't have direct access to them. So I just went around the side, got a little braver and braver each time, and finally the top does come off. That reveals two screws, one here and one here. And then the whole top slides off. And ah, oh, now we got all the antennas. So uh, I'm going after, I've mentioned today, I'm going after the red and the white. These are opposing pairs. I actually have access to those right there on the board. So I don't have to do any more tear down other than that. Um, sure, what the heck, I might. But <laughs> All I'm gonna do is take these little wires and they clip right onto those posts. So I'm carefully gonna remove those and then add these to it. And uh, well, we're gonna hook it up and see what we get. All right, this is going to be a crazy thing to try and video, but I just reached in here with this and popped up, and the first one's off. So I'm going to try and document the second one coming off. Here's the red one. I'm just going to lift gently, applying a little bit of pressure, feeling... Oh, I've got it to move a little bit on one side. I do not want to yank anything off the PCB. Come on. Well, this one's more difficult. There we go. That's off. So now what I'm going to do is take those little connectors. This one's out of the way. And this one's made out of metal. So you may want to pull it loose and get it so it's not going to touch anything ever. And I'm going to put the new studs on there. Now those are in my bag. Here we go. Here's one of them. And you see how it has the same little connector on it? Can I get that in there? Ta-da. Same little connector. I'm just going to reach in. Put it right on top. This blue one would be nice if it would work with me. But of course it knows it's on video. Well, now it's in the way. There we go. There we go. I'm just going to take the first one, put it on top. Now you don't want to manhandle this stuff, but your thumb's really good because it can feel the if it's on there. I'm trying to do this with one hand because I'm filming with the other one. Come on. Bear with me. Let's try the other one just for fun. Come on. Ooh, one down. There we go. That made a nice little sound. Chiropractic adjustment sound. I'm pulling out another one. Now, when we go and hook these up to the antennas, one of them's horizontal, one of them's vertical. You don't have to concern yourself with which is which. If it doesn't work, you just flip them around until you get a better signal. All right. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite way that I want it to be. I want it to be flipped over. And sometimes the cable 
can help you or hurt you. There we go. Right on top. There we go. That one needed to be forced a little bit, but now you'll see I have two pigtails attached to this and it's looking pretty good. I'm going to piece it back together and hook this up. All right, well, I'm going to get those antennas out. So I'm just going to drill a hole right in the top. Now, when, when you do this, you should use two hands. As you can see, I've got a nice clean hole. I'm going to be able to fit those antennas right through there. All right, putting them up through the top was a little bit challenging. I took an extra lead, combined the two leads together without their caps. Did you know the little caps unscrew? That's right, you can unscrew those, and they're much smaller underneath. I would do it if I didn't have one hand. Oh, I can do it with one hand, I think. Yeah, it's much smaller underneath. Can I do that with one hand? Well, you can see, it's much smaller underneath. I combined those two together, taped them, and just simply brought them through. Now I can get rid of this tape, hopefully with two hands. And Well, you get the idea. Then I'm gonna weave them out through the sides, put the cap back on, and all will be good. I'll have two leads. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more updates. Talk to you soon.